everyone. Welcome to Friends and Neighbors. And I am here again with my fabulous, wonderful co-host. Shirley. <laughs> yes. Yes, you are. Sherry and I Tatum. Am Sherry. Well, okay. when you said Shirley, I was like, that's not her name. Why did you say Shirley? I think her name is Sherry Tatum. <laughs> and of course, I'm Sandra O'Neill. I'm going to call you Sandy. How about that? Go for it. <laughs> Let's see. <laughs> oh my goodness, but we're joined here uh, with a wonderful guest who's going to share with us a story, A Journey of Hope Through 9-11. She authored a book called Twice Blessed. Shelly Genovese Calhoun is coming to us via Zoom from Dallas, Texas. Nice to have you here today. Yes. Thank you so much for having me. It's always a delight and you know, whew. I, I read some of your books, Shelly, and what you went through and how you came out is totally, totally, mm -hmm. totally amazing, and it was all God, and yes. I'm so thrilled that you knew that it was God that brought you through and knew enough of God that you could write this book tw twice blessed to help others who goes through similar situations, but it's so good to have a woman of faith here on Friends and Neighbors. Absolutely. Amen. You know, when, when the country at 9-11, let's go back to September. Yeah. And um, that day, I remember, like everyone, yeah. where you were, what you were doing. And, um, you know, Shelly, talk to us about your journey. I want to dive right into it. I know that you say that you have had faith in um, your heart since you were in fourth grade. And isn't it just like God that he will tr just trace his hands, his fingerprints on our lives. Yes. And then he wraps his supernatural arms around us with these God winks that you have experienced through this devastation. Share with us um, just wow. that, that morning, the day before, um, what happened? Right. Well, of course, um, I can just uh, I'll testify about the goodness of God being, you know, through my entire, entire life. And I think that had I not um, become a Christian and just had, um, you know, the, just the Holy Spirit living in me and just, you know, he heard God's voice my whole life, I think that I, on that day when everything was about to happen, I believe that, you know, I wouldn't have been able to go through um, what I went through and how I went through it, um, you mm -hmm. know, alone without the Lord. But um, God just kind of had his hands on me the entire time. Um, my husband and I had been married for five years, and um, he had accepted Christ before we got married, so which was a wonderful, wonderful thing um, that, you know, he knew the Lord. Yeah. Um, so that's, you know, of course, the first and foremost important thing to, you know, know in this story is that, you know, he knew the Lord and, you know, is spending eternity in heaven. Um, but the weekend before 9-11, we had spent an unbelievable weekend um, at in Dallas, actually. We lived, we both lived in, you know, New Jersey. We both worked in Manhattan. The weekend before, we were in um, Dallas, Texas for my brother's um, 16th birthday party. Mm. Actually, it was his 21st birthday, his 21st birthday party. And so we'd flown to Dallas for that weekend and had a great weekend with my family. Um, Steve flew back to New Jersey on September 9th to mm. go to work on September 10th. Mm -hmm. I stayed an extra night um, to hang out with my family and my mother flew back to New Jersey with New Jersey with me and her best friend who I call Big Mama in the book. Mm -hmm. um, just the sheer fact that we flew back to New Jersey on September 10th mm. um, and then these two godly precious women were with me um, you know, on what was about to be the most devastating journey of my life was already God's yes, sovereign planned. hands completely on Amen. my life. Mm -hmm. Still gives me chills like through my body to think about how good God was just um, to, you know, just work out all the plans perfectly for what, you know, he knew that was about to happen. Um, September 11th, um, you know, the night before was just, you know, a night you go to bed, you you, you think of all your hopes and dreams and your expectations um, for the week and how excited I was to have my mom and, um, you know, and my, who I call Big Mama also there. We had all kinds of fun things planned. And, you know, I just don't think you think that something like this could ever happen to you. Yeah. Um, and, of course, the next day, you know, my life would, you know, forever be changed um, now that's, on September that's, 11th. Now, that's when you lost your husband, Steve, right? Yes. Well, yes. You, you know, uh, Shelly, a lot of people... Uh, that go through an experience like you do, um, they get very angry with God. A lot of people walk away from God. But, you know, God has a day, 
and a time that you will depart mm. from this earth. If people mm -hmm. could know that, they, they, I think they could handle it better, but you handled it with such grace, I think, and such faith and such dependency upon the Lord from, from reading some of your book mm -hmm. that it even touched me. I thought, God, could I do? Mm. Could I do? Could you mm -hmm. walk through as it? well? You as were. You, did. you talked you about did it. Uh, yes. You talked about September twelfth. Wow. Right. That your nightmare. Yeah. You woke up and you felt you were still. You're in a nightmare, and you say here. You you cite Philippians four seven, and the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, will guard your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus. When you woke up September twelfth. Did you feel his presence? Yeah. As you're walking you know, into that nightmare? You know, God had honestly put me in a very, very much of a protective cocoon. Um, mm. The moment the towers fell, actually, um, of course, when the towers fell, I collapsed, you know, to the ground. My whole world came crashing down. Um, you know, every hope, every dream, everything that, you know, I had ever thought that my life would look like mm -hmm. crashed down at that moment. When I fell to the ground, um, it was almost as if, and I called out to God. I called out and I, you know, I begged him to save Steve. Save Steve, Lord, if you can just only save one, let it be my husband, let it be Steve. And of course, we know as Christians, you know, at that moment when those towers fell, Steve had already been saved. Steve That's had right. been saved years and years before when he had asked Jesus into his heart to be his savior. So Steve was, you know, in his eternal home, you know. So at that point, though, I received this peace from God that was just an unbelievable peace that, you know, surpasses anything that the human mind could comprehend. And so I thought that that peace that I received at that moment, I thought that Steve was safe. I thought mm. that he was going to come home to my daughter and I that, oh, that wow. day. So I was in a very much of um, a protective cocoon, um, just thinking that God had answered my prayers in the way that I wanted them to be answered. But God had answered my prayers, but God just um, had a different plan for my life. And you had a 16-month-old at that time as well. Yes, yes, so a precious um, baby girl. She was 16 months old. And um, of course, what a blessing it was that my mother was there, that my godmother was there, um, big mama, that, you know, they could take care of her because um, I was, you know, physically not capable mentally to take care because I was kind of, um, you live in a bit of, um, especially in a traumatic shock like that, mm -hmm. um, you know, I'm, I'm just so thankful that they were there to, you know, take care of, you know, her and meet all her needs at that time. Absolutely. Just, you know, God was so good just for your mother uh, to oh. be there with you. What a comp comfort at that, mm -hmm. at, at that precise moment to have your mother with you. But you also had the wonderful presence of the Lord uh, to comfort yes. you also. So yes. I'm with you. God planned it all. And I, mm -hmm. I know that he does plan our steps. He does. Our steps are, are directed of the Lord or we wouldn't mm -hmm. have this book today. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. So I wanted to also dive into that point of when you realized that your prayers were not answered in the way you thought, how did you walk into that um, right. part of your life? Right. Gosh, yeah. So it was honestly, um, it was almost a week later. It was on September the 17th that I finally realized that Steve was not coming home. Mm -hmm. um, you know, I had lived the whole week. I had lived in my own reality that I wanted, the reality that I thought that this voice of the Lord had spoke to me, giving me this peace. You know, of course, the world was saying there's no way, but I was saying, well, my God can do anything. And this is what he told me. Yeah. And so that's, was, that's where I was living at that time. I would sit in my closet, um, I would listen to praise music, I would just not hear the voices around me that were speaking, you know, anything different. Um, but finally on, you know, September the 17th, there had been an article that had been written in our township newspaper. Mm -hmm. And so finally that night we got out, um, you know, with pajamas on, it was probably one o'clock in the morning um, and I wanted to see this cover of this newspaper. And so as I approached the newsstand with my mom and um, her best friend, Big Mom, in the car, um, I saw a big headliner and it had my husband's picture on it and it said, husband, father, husband, father, friends, not coming home. Oh. And at that moment, you know, everything just rushed, you know, down on me. And of course, at that moment, I knew for certainty that, um, you know, that my husband wasn't coming home. Um, but the unbelievable thing about it was, is I sat in the car and just cried for 
you know, what seems like hours with my mom and with, um, you know, her, her friend, Big Mama, we just, we cried for hours until we almost just simply ran out of tears. But it was like the promises of the Lord just swept over us. Um, you know, I knew that he said that he would be the father to the fatherless. I knew he said would never leave me or forsake me. And at that moment, he also, um, you know, he told me that he had a hope and a future for me. And I remembered those things. And I clung to those promises because I knew that without a shadow of a doubt, that there was no way that I was going to wake up the next morning or get out of bed without the hope of the Lord to lead me, you know, every step, like you're saying, to just illuminate every step that I was about to have to take. You know, I, that song, the hymn that says, I need thee every, every hour, hour. at yeah. every hour, every second. You know, Shelly, you are so inspirational. I know that you're a speaker as well as an author, but you inspire, you're inspiring me to know to go mm. back to the scriptures and yes. take every Hold thought to it. captive yes, because the Believe. word is alive and well and a lot. Yeah. And you were in an environment in New Jersey yes. where I mean, there's not a lot of believers, possibly. Real strong I mean, believers. Strong, yeah, strong like, believers. Like Shelley, yeah. um, and um, just to hear that you surrounded yourself with, I mean, I just a hedge of protection of your mom and big mama. But the body of Christ. Yes. Uh, Shelly mentions that the body of Christ was unbelievable at that mm. time for her. Exactly yes. how did they come and comfort yeah. you? How were they the hands right. and feet of yeah. Jesus? Right. Um, in so many ways. I mean, um, first of all, I do want to say, though, um, it was always God's faithfulness. I mean, I'm just so thankful that he was faithful even when we're not faithful. Amen. Because it wasn't like I was living this perfect, godly life in New Jersey. I mean, I think when your life is going well, I mean, you know, yeah. I had this charmed life. I had this beautiful um, family. I had this beautiful home. I had this wonderful job. I had this um, unbelievable life that I was living. And I think sometimes when we're living in the midst of that, it's not like the Lord is foremost on our mind. It wasn't right. like I was in, you know, and in the word every day, but it was, it was tucked in my heart from when I was young. And it was um, something that God, it was verses that I didn't even know that I really knew that God brought to my, you know, my heart at that time. So having the word of God just hidden in your heart is just so, so important. Um, yeah. But getting back to your question also, um, People showed up. People just showed up for me. You know, I think that um, it is so much better. Um, you know, people will say, if, if, if you've ever lost a loved one, people will say like, oh my goodness, I'll, you know, let me know if there's anything I can do for you. And normally those people are probably not going to reach out to you. You need to just show up. And people just showed up for mm. me. People took Jack one for walks. People took Jack one for play dates. People brought us meals. People, you know, um, picked up things from the grocery store. They helped me you know, go online to pay my bills so my bills wouldn't be, you know, late. I mean, just every little need was met. I mean, I was overwhelmed for months, not even able to go to the grocery store because I couldn't concentrate because I couldn't remember what I was doing. Mm. Um, your mind just, you know, grief is a heavy, heavy thing. And it just, um, it takes a part of you, you know, physically and mentally. Uh, Shelly, did you think you would ever get to the point of being able to live happy again, again yes. through all of that trauma or get twice yeah. yep or be married oh, yeah. again okay. or yes um you know it's funny because i mean of course the lord had you know promised me that i was going to have a hope and a future but you can't see that hope in that future you can't see anything you can't even see happiness in sight i mean i remember the first time that i felt happy um, mm. you know, like um, the emotion of happy. Um, and you feel kind of guilty. You're kind of like, oh, you know, like, I don't know if I can feel this. I, this feels strange to me. Of course, I always had peace. Now there was always that peace and I could watch others grieving around me and see their grief. And it was much different than how I was grieving because I was grieving with the comfort of the Lord and with the joy of the Lord. And, you know, they were grieving, um, you know, without that. And that's just, Ooh, that's, that's a heavy, heavy, it was grief like I had never seen mm, before. Mm. Um, and, you know, of course, I just wish that they could just see a glimpse of Jesus. I continue to pray that people would come to know the Lord, you know, through this. Absolutely. Do, do you feel like through uh, what all you went through that you're mm -hmm. able to witness more uh, to other ladies or maybe even gentlemen that have mm -hmm. gone through this that you can encourage them in the word? 
Yes, absolutely. You know, God is so good. I mean, he has taken me on a long, long path through all of this. And, um, but now I help with a grief group and I help with a group called Grief Share at, you know, at our church. And, you know, and it was something that I don't think that I really wanted to do. I mean, it's very, you know, difficult to go back into that situation and then even take on someone's grief to Mm. hear, you know, their stories, to watch them cry. But, you know, of course, God continually showed me that, you know, he wanted to use me and give that same compassion that I was given through him to give comfort to others. And I think that that's the way God grows us. I mean, he's continually showed me, you know, new aspects of his character, you know, day by day, year by year, um, you know, step by step um, want, through this whole process. I want to ask a question. You said you your gift was faith. Mm-hmm. Who helped you build this marvelous faith that you have? And when did you know that you have this Mm-hmm. so much faith that, that you have. And, you know, I mean, was it, you, did you go to Bible studies? Did you go to church all the time? Did you listen to all pastors? How did you build your faith? Because everybody doesn't have the faith that you have. Right. Um, I mean, I think God just builds our faith. I mean, I think that he gives us each a measure of faith. And I think that the things that you go through in life and depending on the Lord and, you know, it'd been so many different things in my life, starting with small things when we were young. um, I saw God, even when I was saved in fourth grade, you know, my, my family went through hardships, um, you know, money hardships. And I remember my mom, she would give to the church. And I remember that we wouldn't have pet, you know, money to pay our electric bill and God would come through for us. And I just mm. continually saw God's faithfulness from a young age. And I think that that's, you know, what, what built, you know, my faith. And I think that faith yeah. is just something that you, you grow. I think we're all given, you know, the same, you know, measure of faith. Well, you said something a minute ago, and and I have to agree with you. You said he's faithful even Mm -hmm. when we're not. And there is scripture that backs that up. He says he's faithful when we are faithless because Mm -hmm. your your faith can be on the mountain, but sometimes it can be down here in the valley. But that's when he steps in, I think, and kind of picks you up and gives you that little extra of what you need to get through at the at that time. And right. it and it certainly shows that that you have this kind of faith because I mean how could you come about writing such a marvelous no. book if you didn't. And I, I love your book and I love God. how you start with the scripture and at the, you, I want to just quote this last one, Joel 2, 25, I will restore to you the years that the swarming locust has eaten. And oh, I, I just, I love that, you know, if God is faithful in your circumstance, it increases mm-hmm. the faith for me and for Sherry and for everyone else. So um, tell us quickly how people can get a hold of you and if they want you to come and speak um, quickly before we go on to break. To break, yeah. Um, um, Well, um, I have a website. I don't even know what the name of my website (laughs) is right now. I haven't done it for so long. I guess most people ask me about my book, how you can get in touch with my book. But the book is Twice Blessed, um, A Journey of Hope Through 9-11. It's mostly sold. I mean, it's sold everywhere, everywhere, but Amazon is probably the easiest way to get a hold of it. Awesome. Um, oh, well, but um, I had I had a publicist for years, and so she's how I kind of <laughs> have gotten lots of speaking engagements, and everybody was just, you know, contacting um her. her. Uh, well, Shelly, thank you so much for sharing your story. And um, I hope that uh, we can have you back on the show. Um, it's been a delight to be able to uh, hear about yes. the hope in your journey. God bless you. Yes, and we'll see you next you. time. Thank uh, you so much, ladies. Have a blessed day. Thank you. Welcome back to Friends and Neighbors. What a delight to talk to Shelly. Yeah. Oh my goodness. So coming from a fashion industry, losing her husband, mm. and then writing a book. God is indeed so faithful. And never had wanted to write a book. I know, right? Uh. Well, we never know what journey we're going to be walking Absolutely. on. Absolutely. With God with us, we can do all things. All things, yes. We're talking about God's faithfulness, we have a yeah. faithful friend of yes, ours. Yes, we Ginger love. Ginger Sanders. Yes. So good to have you back. <laughs> so good to be here. Yeah. And what a testimony she has. Yes. yes. What a story from the mm. heart. But I just want to share with her today, uh, we are working with the Billy Graham Rapid Response Team. Yes. yes. And that came about because of 9-11. 
Was it really? Wow. And it sort of goes back to Romans 8, 28. Mm -hmm. mm, that's right. You know, where God can, can make things good for mm -hmm. those that love the Lord. Yeah. And when bad things happen, God can use it for good. Yes, yes absolutely. And Franklin Graham went to ground zero. Mm. And it's sort of like when Jesus was in Matthew, he saw the multitude and he had compassion yes. because they were scattered like sheep without a shepherd. Mm. And Franklin came back burdened because he saw people in neighborhoods and groups and churches and congregations, all of them were hurting, the pastors, everybody was hurting because they had friends, they had loved ones, they had neighbors, mm -hmm. people that they had lost in Frankfurt. Or they Franklin, had no one to comfort them. They had them. no one to comfort, comfort them. Comfort. Yeah. And Franklin was looking and he started praying, what can we do to help these masses of mm. people in pain? And so he had a meeting at the Billy Graham, Rapid, or Billy Graham Evangelistic Association and they talked about it and they prayed about it. And in 2002, they had their first deployment of trained Billy Graham rapid response chaplains mm. to go into disasters awesome. to love and comfort and give emotional and spiritual care wow. to the people yes. and let them know that they could be, as you said in that last mm -hmm. interview, the hands and feet of Jesus, yes. just to love on people. There's physical needs often in disasters. Yes, yes, yes. What, uh, the emotional, they just need a hug uh, or, or listening ear. Or just being present. Somebody I mean, we just, you that are be home based in Florida, so you um We've just had the big hurricane. hurricane. Yes. Yeah. How was that, Ginger? Did y'all get called? We did not. Well, they have actually, Samaritan's Purse Disaster Relief has been set up mm -hmm. in three locations, and they have Billy Graham Rapid Response Chaplains there now. There are Billy Graham Rapid Response Chaplains literally around the world now. There are over 2,000 active trained chaplains, mm -hmm. and they have deployed to shootings, uh, my husband and I deployed to Sandy Hook, the yeah. Aurora shootings, to hurricanes, uh, the one that we just recently yep, had, that's right. uh, tornadoes, floods, wildfires. And because oh. people are hurting Mother Nature and the evil, and people have asked us, why does God allow this? Mm -hmm. yeah. Why does God allow this? Well, there is going to be death and sickness and pain in this world we live in until Jesus comes back. That's, yeah. the right, that's right. But God can use that to bring people to him. Just this year alone, they have deployed over 22 times mm. already. Mm. Wow. And over 700 people have known to become Christians oh, and accept God. Christ. Praise yeah. God. Over 18,000 have been prayed with that they just kept count of and said, we've prayed with this couple. Mm. But God has a purpose and his purpose is to lead people to Christ. Amen. He sent his son to die for us. Yeah. And with Shelley's testimony of her faith mm. in 9-11, I know, I can't imagine. I can't either. Mm -hmm. The tragedy those people felt. Mm -hmm. But there's tragedies everywhere. Mm -hmm. And we all have to get through this. But there's got to be good. Mm -hmm. And the good can come by sharing Jesus. Well, you, right. you know, Ginger, too, it's, it's a... Um, a lost, you feel lost in a time like that. You feel like you're encapsulated and it's just you and there's no help, really gonna be any help, nobody can. But then someone comes along like you and Denny, loves on them, prays with them, shares with them that Jesus is there, he loves them. It can save a person's, not just their physical body, but their soul that's People, going to live for eternity. Yeah. And that's the marvelous thing in that y'all had that love to give because you had experienced it yourself. We find that in this culture that, that we live in silos mm -hmm. and we've got to get out there. And sometimes I'm like, I'm not equipped. I don't know what to, to say. Do, yeah. Sometimes your presence and a smile exactly is all that people need. We need that connection. So I'm so grateful that there is this organization that can do that and can equip people to know what to do. And they can go online to thebillygram.org mm -hmm. and they have training online. Oh good, so you don't so even have to go in. You don't even have no, to go. No, that's awesome. To wow. train you how to help 
friends or neighbors that may yep. be going through something. Yep. Mm -hmm. And how do, I'm sure about how to detect mm -hmm. also, like if you're being, do they, like if it's not a huge tragedy, like a hurricane or the mm -hmm. Twin Towers that we were talking about, and you know, you also want to detect, right? Like be, have discernment. I was gonna say, God gives you discernment. Yes. And sometimes mm -hmm. God convicts us, I need to say something, but what do I say? Mm -hmm. Or a death. You go and you go, what do I say? Yeah. Sometimes, like you said, Sandra, you don't have to say anything. Mm -hmm. yeah. Just be there. Present. And do, like mm -hmm. Shelly was saying, people started just going grocery mm -hmm. shopping. Don't ask. Any, yeah, just, just, and, ooh, and that's something I have learned recently, yeah. especially through the pandemic and through things. Do it. Don't ask. Yeah, just, just do it. Um, mm -hmm. If Absolutely. God has put it in your heart to do, go bless someone. Absolutely. So. Because yeah. now another thing that the Billy Graham Rapid Response team started is they have started training and working with law enforcement right because oh. law enforcement officers go and see so mm, much so sure they gosh, go through yeah. so much sure so and dramatic. so this is not only for the officers themselves but their families yeah. their spouses their one thing that Denny has always said is when we would go into a disaster or a tragedy, his saying was, is what you're sent there for may not be what you're sent there for. Mm. Oh. Because we would go into a disaster and once we went into New Orleans to a flood mm -hmm. and lo and behold, they had just had an ambush of deputies shot. Oh my goodness. And Denny and I ended up at the grandparents' house wow. of those deputies. Wow. So what you're sent there for may not be what, but if God convicts you, do, do, it. It. do it. Oh, You're Ginger, it's a joy to have you back. Yes. I've missed you. You are a blessing, and I'm grateful thank that we've you. had this time to talk. Thank and you. Yes. thank you for joining us on this episode of Friends and Neighbors. It is a joy to be with you and an honor, and we pray that if you don't know who Jesus is, you will get to know him. Um, we will see you next time on the Friends and Neighbors. Friends and Neighbors. Amen.